is Viva Podcast. Thank you for joining in our morning daily devotion. Even Christ was called the son of David, a man after God's own heart who was mighty in battle when it came to fighting, could kill a hundred men by himself. He was so creative that when he wanted to hear a sound, he created an instrument. He was musical enough to play it, wrote the lyrics to all the songs that he wanted to sing, and yet David slipped into some very childish behavior. From his position of leadership, in a moment of boyish temptation, fell to his childish toys. Now we have a situation because the king is struggling with the kid. Have you been in David's place? Oh, we have to hold our image up. But let's not target the men only. Even the women too. Let's not act as if you are walking with Jesus and Paul in the clouds. Even you have your demons. David finally doesn't know how to control the kid in him, loses his balance. The king is in a crisis over the kid and does a kiddish thing. In panic decides, I'm going to have her husband. He has power now. Maybe kiddish, but he has power. David never counted on this level of commitment from this lowly man, Uriah, who had no prestige or title but had far more balance than the king did. I'm going to skip a few chapters into 2 Samuel 16 where it tells us, at verse 23, at the council of Ahithopel, he was so insightful that when people talked to him, they felt they were talking to God. When Ahithopel saw that his advice had not been followed, in chapter 17 it says, he saddled his donkey, set out for his house, put his house in order, and then hanged himself. How does a man go from being God's own man when people talk to him, and then a few days later, turn so frustrated that you turn angry at life and hang yourself? Do you know who he was? He was the grandfather of Bathsheba. He knew David impregnated his granddaughter. Why did he get so bitter? Someone said, is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam? And he hears that. David violated his own offspring. The man David didn't do anything to Ahithopel himself. He did something to his family, but he picked up the offense. Not because someone does something to you, but because they did it to someone dear to you. He grew so bitter and angry that he quit David's camp joined the opposition, once David's advisor, now on the enemy's camp, trying to overthrow David. Do you know who that was? David's own son, Absalom. He couldn't get over the bitterness in his heart toward what David had done to his grandchild. Bitterness is a dangerous thing. It will mess you up. I wonder how many relationships you cut off, how many jobs you quit, how many churches you've changed, not because somebody did something to you, but because they did something to someone you know. Ahithopel joined Absalom's camp to oppose David, but he ended up hurting himself. My heart goes out to him. God is the one who judges those who do wrong. He doesn't need your help to carry out his plans. The senior citizen tried to hurt David, but he didn't understand that God already passed a decree on David. The sword shall never leave your house. When you want to hurt people who hurt you, they can turn around and harm you again. When God deals with them, it is dealt with once and for all. Now, Ayitopel, you're trying to help God out, but God doesn't need your help. And in that heart-wrenching moment, David writes Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions against you. You only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. When people wrong us, it's against God. All sin is against God alone. Now I could think of David doing so many people wrong, but people don't owe him an answer. No one has the power to put David in heaven or hell. Somebody did something against you and owes you an answer, but you didn't make the heavens and the earth. You didn't wake anyone this morning. You didn't heal anyone of sickness. When it comes to sin, we violate God. It is him to whom we must bow down and it is him to whom we owe an answer. That's why I'm so glad he sent Jesus as an answer. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We are in no place to hold someone hostage to our expectations as though they have wronged us. At the time when Leonardo da Vinci painted The Last Supper, he had an enemy who was a fellow painter. Da Vinci had a bitter argument with this man and despised him. When Da Vinci painted the face of Judas Iscariot at the table with Jesus, he used the face of his enemy so that it would present for ages the man who betrayed Jesus. Took delight while painting this picture of his friend in knowing that others would actually notice the face of his enemy on Judas. As he worked on the faces of the other disciples, he often tried to paint the face of Jesus but couldn't make any progress. Da Vinci felt frustrated, confused. In time he realized what was wrong. His bitterness and unforgiving attitude for the other painter was holding him back from finishing the face of Jesus. 
Only after making peace with his fellow painter and repainting the face of Judas was he able to paint the face of Jesus and complete his masterpiece. Leave your gift at the altar. First go be reconciled and then come and offer your gift. One of the reasons we have a hard time accepting the forgiveness of God is that we find it hard to forgive others. That's why Jesus said, if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Jesus wants us to understand that forgiveness ultimately comes from the Father. An offense against the Son is an offense against the Father. Who are we to deny forgiveness to the very ones Christ himself offers forgiveness to? Amen. For more details, please contact 9163 or email us to info at fibaonline.org. 